Hey you guys, Mr. Pokey here, back with another video and today I'm just gonna do a very quick little video on everything that you should know to try and improve your Shiyu defense uh, performance. So you can treat this like a Shiyu defense guy if you are. So without further ado, let's get into today's content. Subscribe! Alright, so just a quick little introduction. What exactly is Shiyu Defense? So this is basically like as you guys have known by now, this is the end game mode for Shiyu Defense. Uh, I think this is probably like our third, if not fourth, rotation. And then the next refresh is gonna be in five days and 13 hours as of the time this recording. Currently, this mode that we have right now, the critical node, it is the only mode that is refreshable. Whereas for a stable and disputed node, they are basically one-time clear events. Uh, the disputed node, honestly, it is a very, very fun mode by itself. A different criteria. Here, which is basically no agents are defeated and in contrast the enemies here they will hit you for a lot harder and they're a lot more aggressive right so contrary to this stable and critical notes criteria is exactly the same which is clearing them in a set amount of time the criteria for getting air strength shield defense is basically clearing both stages within five minutes uh, so that's going to be for first side as well as the second side right so that's going to be the brief introduction and just like you know in all of the end game content in mihoyo games hongai star real genshin impact as well as now shield defense uh different enemies will have different Different weaknesses as well as different buffs. Right? So as you can see over here, currently our buff is gonna be when an enemy is stunned, all squad members gain two stacks of fervor, and when an attribute anomaly is triggered, all squad members gain one stack of fervor. It lasts 20 seconds up to three times, and for every single stack, increase attack by 10% and proficient and proficiency by 10. So every single uh, different rotations you will get buffs that will synergize better with usually it's going to be the rate up unit so currently we do have chain dough as well as Seth, which is quote unquote like the flavor of the month and you can see that if players are going to be using chain dough in this side you'll notice that you will be clearing this uh, very very easily or at least to to a uh, lot or at least to great success, right? Uh, not just for the buffs, but also because of the enemy. First of all, the enemy, they are weird to physical, and this specific monster over here, the uh, Troublemaker, Wanter, Enforcer, he is extremely, extremely aggressive, which means that he'll hit you very, very frequently, perfectly synergizing with Jane Doe's kit. Because Jane Doe is a kit that you want her to dodge very frequently in order to maintain her passion stream, right? So that's going to be that. And then for our next side, it's going to be the... Um, this Hans, which is basically another electric unit with the electrical resistance to physical, right? So basically, they're telling you use Jane on the first half, and the second half, honestly, you can rush on Julian, you can run Ellen, they're all pretty much gonna work, right? So, uh, that is essentially kind of like the basics of shield defense. Look out for the stacks, uh, know the criteria, know the enemy weaknesses, and then you make a team into it, right? So, speaking about team building in shield defense, and this is pretty much for almost any single of the Angan content, unless we get uh, more game modes in the future, uh, Team building will usually revolve around two main DPS, two stunners, as well as two supporting units. For a normally team specifically, uh, you might not run a stunner. You could consider running the double anomaly into one single support. In this case, it's going to be Seth. Uh, but to my experience playing Jindo, uh, especially with Qing Yi, with even Koleda, I find myself liking the playstyle of running a stunner, especially because my Jindo, she's easy. Uh, she doesn't have any mindscape, so her passion stream up time is not going to be extremely fast, right? So it really depends on team building, and if you want a more detailed team building guide, feel free to check out some of my other content in Zenon Zone Zero. So I will be kind of demonstrating this example today with uh, Jindo as well as Drew Yuan, right? The Jindo comp as well as the uh, Jindo's quote-unquote best in slot, although I will swap this with Qing Yi if I could, but for this, so you want Qing Yi, second side is going to be Drew Yuan's best team with Qing Yi as well as Nicole, right? For the bang boost, now specifically about the bang boost, I would say that they do matter a little bit, but probably not by a very large margin. Maybe 80 to 90% of the damage output is still going to be coming from your team of three. So they are mostly there to, you know, it's more for like their active skills. So for example, this Verzona Boo, it has a mini black hole that can actually pull in enemies together and group them up, which is excellent, excellent, excellent for mobs, right? So just like Nicole's little black hole. And then for this one, I basically picked him for the uh, anomaly blood passive, right? So that's going to be that. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be activating this uh, two physical anomaly attribute, but it's really just for this active skill as well as the chain attack, right? So uh, that is basically it. And we can just kind of jump in to go through some of the tips and tricks before we uh, go through this run together. <laughs> 
So the very, very first tip about attempting shield defense is probably going to be one of, if not the most important tip, knowing your unit's levels and builds. I would say that for Xenon Zone Zero, raising units probably might be a little bit more difficult uh, compared to, say, Hongi Starbucks, right? Because, for example, the Echoes of War material in, in Xenon Zone Zero, uh, because you only get like three and once... You only get three tries and once each. It can be a little bit difficult to fully max them out. But for your end game content, I would say a benchmark that players can start thinking, especially if you're casual, is at least around level 50 to level 60 DPS units. For your support units and, and base units, it might not be that important. So you can look at it. My set is still level 20. All right. So it's honestly quite chill. And then my other team, uh, Nicole is also level 40. Right? But as long as your main units that are on the field for the longest amount of time. So for example, Qing is on level 60 because she's on field, she does damage, she does days. So I do want to make her up. And Zhu Yuan, DPS, no question asked, right? So levels, 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 very, very important. Not just for your character, also for your W engines, right? So this is still a little cooking a little bit. I'm still building her. And same thing for your relics. I would say, and on the same note, same thing for your drive this. I would say that if you want to tackle shield defense at the fastest possible time, because that's at least how I remember I did it back in my very, very first shield defense clear, right? Upgrading my drive discs were ex was extremely, extremely important, especially for my crit DPS, because every single crit stat, your attack percentage, your crit damage, all the kind of stuff, it mattered a lot. I might say even more important than some levels in your tracers. Like, honestly, if you don't have max out level 10, even if they're at level 6 or level 7, it's not that bad, as long as you had a pretty decent main stats for your 4-piece and 2-piece, right? Particularly if you want to care only about main sets slot two slot slot two as well as four five six these four slots the main sets are the most important when it comes to your overall damage slot two is flat attack very important then this is usually crit rate or core damage and this is going to be anomaly and this is going to be physical or attack percentage and this is usually attack percentage or anomaly mastery right? so these four main sets should be your number one priority if you want to try and tackle the shield defense as soon as you possibly can right? All right, so one of the first thing that you guys need to remember for every single endgame stage is the power of grouping. So grouping is essentially when you usually enter, very rarely do you see a stage with no mobs. There will always be some kind of mobs. So your job as a player is to try and group them up as much as you can so that when you hit them, you can hit them all at the same time. All right, you can kind of hit them all at the same time. To just get all of them very very quickly. So now you can see that I didn't really get them all together because of the poor grouping, and it has really taken me around 20 seconds. Right. Whereas if we were to actually group them properly, it's not exactly perfect, but you can see that it's still shaved off by around 20 seconds of our time. Right. So. Uh, I think a better example, I'll kind of just show it later on with a Zhu Yun and Nicole team. I think that one is really, really good grouping. Uh, but the gist of the situation is the one of, if not the most important things for Zen and Zone Zero Shield Defense is going to be your grouping mechanic. So the grouping mechanic is basically just going to be grouping all of the enemies up together to get them as close as possible because pretty much every single attack you have in Zen and Zone Zero, they are considered as area of effect damage. There isn't really like a single target damage per se. So the closer the enemies are grouped together, the more frequently can you hit all of them at the same time, drastically improve your clear time range. So an example or a trick that I like to do for myself is always aim the range target first before the me melee targets. Because what I've noticed is that for your range targets, they will stay in one spot. Whereas for your melee targets, they will actually follow to where you're going. So aiming the range targets first draws the melee targets to you and it will ultimately kind of lump them up together. So when you're doing that, then you can kind of use like your Saki Saki, like your Nicole skill or your Qing is electric field, lump them together, cast the QTE and then you can instantly change into your damage dealers to just deal with them very very quickly so that is one very good trick that I can like to do with grouping uh, another mechanic I kind of want you guys to take a notice of is that you can notice how this guy has this daze multiplier going up inside this little number is how far the 21 that signals how far he is from getting this and then the little circle be beside the number is now 31 it is how many more hits it's gonna take to get the assault anomaly so this is for Jane though and then we want to switch to Seth it will build up this electric anomaly so different animals will have different anomalies so you kind of want to see where the circle as well as the bar is to let you guys know when are you going to trigger their different respective anomalies or when are you 
gonna be days and target. So the reason why I would say this days number is especially important, especially for units like Jane Doe, is that it will let you know when can you swap into your stunner. Because Jane Doe as a unit, she is very on field by nature. You kind of want her to be on the field as much as possible. So unless you are absolutely sure that you are gonna be able to you know break the target immediately after this, uh, then I would say try to use Jane Doe as much as possible. So for example, right now the enemy is at 58. I'm gonna be looking for number around 70. So you can see this is around 68, around 70 here. So now that we hit this some, number 70, now I know that my Koleda, if I were to swap in any of the skills, it will already be at 93. And into a dodge counter, we can instantly break this guy, right? So it's roughly around 70 ish. It also kind of depends on the enemy uh, as to how high their base bar is. But for this specific enemy, it's around 70. That's when I can swap my Koleda and do tons of damage, right? So knowing how close you are to the target, uh, it will definitely help you improve the overall rotations in Zemin Zone 0, right? Um, and we'll let this play out a little bit. Yeah. Alright, so that was for the days bar. Then what about the circle be beside the guy? So if you take a look at this circle beside the guy, you can see that it is building up, building up, building up, building up, building up, building up. And now as it's close to the full circle, then it triggers the thingy, right? Now I want you guys to know that every single time you want to trigger it normally, there's actually a cap as to which means that if the guy is going to be close to reaching the assault okay so for example right now he's very close to reaching the assault right so you could either trigger this with like your normal base attack spins or one skill so notice how if i do like so a single dodge counter would have triggered the assault but if you see your unit if you see your abilities that your enhanced skill do this this is instantly almost 70% of the entire dodge bar. Unfortunately, because of the way this, this mechanic works, even if you are very close, you can see it is super, super close, right? It is super, super close to breaking. Uh, it is unfortunately still gonna be triggered as you getting the maximum anomaly. So if I were to use a anomaly here, you can see that it will start at zero again. So you kind of want to try to use your skill as close to the guy's... Um, Emptiness, sorry. If you want to try to use your skills depending on how far the guy is from the full anomaly, right? So this is also the same for your ultimate. So right now, the guy is like close to at zero. So if I will use my ultimate here, it will pretty much break the guy instantly, right? One ultimate will pretty much break the guy instantly. Whereas if we do the same thing, so let me try that again. Not sure if this guy can survive. Don't think Bro is surviving. Okay, it's almost there. Okay, now you can see that. Okay, I want to do this something. So now you can see that the guy's bar is almost close to full. And watch what happens if I were to use my ultimate right here. It will still trigger the assault as per normal, but there's no access, right? So if you would use your ultimate if the guy is already close to getting full assault, it is arguably a complete waste of Jane Doe's ultimate. So you kind of want to just use this, not just for Jane Doe, but for any anomaly units to note their anomaly attribute bar and try to use something that will give you the highest amount of value, right? So something that will get you as close to the full assault as possible. And then when you're getting there, then start using your basic attacks to get the full value here, right? So that is going to be another tip for you guys. Another tip that I guess you guys can have, especially for enemies that hit you a lot, is how do you dodge targets very, very easily? So, I mean, the obvious answer is looking for the flash. But a better answer is sometimes the enemy just hits you so fast that you might not even react fast enough. So, for specific enemies, they usually have an attack pattern. The, and it sometimes doesn't even show you the flash. So you get what you can see, the guy had a double punch, but a second punch didn't even have a flash, and you just have to dodge it by instinct. So this is the double, yep. So you see that there was a double punch. So the second hit actually did not have any flash. So sometimes the, the unit will show you the flash, but sometimes it's not always guaranteed, right? So you kind of have to just learn this from like muscle memory and just play with this stage long enough to kind of know what he's going to do. So you can kind of see his rotation is getting a little bit similar. So he starts with a lunge and then you're going to hit a hit over here and then a double punch downwards. So that's the exact scenario. So you can see, 
jump, jump, and he's gonna do another punch here, and we dodge, right? So this is kind of like the rotations that this guy will have, and that is pretty much all this guy has, right? So done, launch, and he's gonna do another punch over here, and just dodge instantly, right? So knowing the rotations that enemy AI has, it will make your life a lot easier, even if you don't really, if you aren't that familiar with playing the sound right? So definitely improves the overall experience. Even if you're not using Jane Doe for units, like for example, that doesn't have a, as smooth of a dodge as Jane Doe, it can still be quite easy because Jane Doe, you know, she has a triple dodge, so it can be quite easy. But for units that only has a single dodge or like more clunky, Knowing the attack patterns would definitely still make your gameplay as few a lot slower. So I'm literally doing this while I'm talking to you guys. So definitely it's still a little bit distracted. But because I play this guy so much by now, his mechanics and movesets, it, it is kind of like second nature to me, right? So uh learning enemies attack movesets is quite important for me. So that was a tip for usually like hyper aggressive units like the uh, brute just now. Uh, this is gonna be another tip which I will be now showcasing using the different team comp this time featuring Chu Yuan Qing as well as the core. Right? Very straightforward. You still enter with Qing Yi, start with this immediately, and this will just kind of group everything up together. And once they're broken, you just kind of let go, and then you cause a Nicole here. So you cause a Nicole there, it will make her launch a thing to group them up together. And if you break them differently at a different time, you can actually shoot out very quick, quick as a quick assist, which is very beneficial. So for this specific robot, it can be a little bit annoying because the moves are quite fast and the timers are very, very short. All right, and also I guess I just did play this boss fast enough, so not as familiar. Uh, for this side, you kind of want to just make use of the Qing Yi speed. All right, I frame this, and then you just kind of resume the rotations. Usually, I would say you need to watch this guy a little bit more. Because the movements are a lot more erratic compared to the other guy, because it's like a machine, right? So it's not as straightforward. But once you kind of get it down, and his weakness is broken, then you can just kind of let it go over here. Uh, for chain attacks, I guess I will use it to talk about chain attacks. The order of your chain attacks definitely matter. So if you want to use a full chain, for example, with Chu Yuan, for example, you kind of want to end off with Nicole, because the Nicole can trip quick assist into Chu Yuan to cast off his full skill into a skill, enhance heavy attack, and then cast an ultimate into an enhanced heavy attack again and it kind of is the guy is really like a half HP right so that's kind of like a way they kind of play this we can just play that to get a little bit more bullets and then we can kind of sort this in the chingy to parry we can kind of just use our skill to build up our thingy a little bit more okay pop this up over here connect into this and then we just stick in this oh okay that was kind of my bad you are just gonna tank this through just to get the full stacks of subjugations. Always start with Zhu Yuan because this allows us to get a three bullets and then we end off with Nicole, right? So if you accidentally press wrong, just instantly swap out and swap back into Zhu Yuan again. So like she can always be the last man standing, right? Your goal of this uh, team comp is always make Zhu Yuan be the last man standing. And if you can make like this a little bit more, use Nicole to kind of weave in your attacks because just to apply a little bit more of the defense, right? so that would be very, very good. Uh, then we got Qing Yi just kind of do that the same thing over again if the guy is not going to be winless broken because Qing Yi does break very, very quickly. Once you let go of this, enhance this attack. So we're just going to do this. Dodging is also relatively straightforward. Then just face end all this, launch the full text, and the guy is probably going to be winless broken around here. And we just let it go. Then the process repeats itself. Open with two Yuan. Release back into your Bang Bu and finally Nicole and boom, 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 and that is pretty much gonna be how you're gonna be dealing with this boss. Uh, I would say it is definitely maybe a different kind of difficulty, right? Different kind of difficulty. Uh, the first boss is gonna be moving a lot faster, but I think he technically hits you less painfully. Whereas for this boss, it really hits you by quite hard, so you do need to kind of be wary a little bit, All right? So that is gonna be sort of like a general guide for like our current final stage of this shield defense, as alongside with some of our other tips. One last tip before we kind of move on from today's content is pretty much gonna be who you are gonna be using for shield defense in the future, because generally speaking, as of right now, I would say that uh, the content is still quite manageable. But we won't really know what kind of other end game modes that's going to be. You can see this, there's this fourth slot which is empty right next to Disputed Node. So if they release a brand new game mode, uh, it will definitely change up the tempo or like the priority of our pooling value in Zen Zone Zero. So for example, in Disputed Note, because it is absolutely no relevance to the timer whatsoever, uh, defense characters definitely play 
probably a more major role here, especially if you are like more of a casual player and you can't really utilize the Dodgers properly, right? So having a tankier character definitely makes your life a lot, a lot easier. As well as looking at the, the buffs, perfect dodge, perfect as if you get a little bit of health. So it really kind of depends what endgame content we are going for. For the current Shiyu defense, uh, I would say both crit DPS as well as anomaly DPS such as Jindo as well as and Zhu Yuan, they are both excellent in their own rights. Jane, though, I feel it is a little bit easier to play uh, because you don't really need to care about the rotations by that much. You don't need to worry about crit. Just try to stack on the anomaly as much as you can and do the anomaly damage, right? Uh, that being said, you still kind of have a little bit of a understanding as to, for example, when you use your breaker, if you want to use breaker, when you want to use a second, like um, a normal unit, for example, maybe Grace over here is also workable. And Seth, you know, when do you slot in Seth, when do you switch in your hip, and how does it attack or your skill? And Jane Doe, how long does she be on the field? When can you dodge? So there can still be nuances to, to the Jane Doe, but I say that objectively, sorry, and I feel that subjectively, Jane Doe does feel a little bit easier for me to play. Whereas for Zhu Yuan, she feels more, uh, quite satisfying, right? especially with the Qing Yi and Nicole, the damage I see, like especially the damage for screenshot lovers, uh, this kind of crit DPS burst damage setup is still going to be very, very viable. Uh, I do want to say this one thing though. There is this one specific enemy which might be a potential problem for future shield defenses, especially for a normal team, is this particular pillar. All right, so if you're up against this specific enemy called the Mandrake, you can notice he does not have an anomaly bar, nor does he have a toughness bar or a daze bar, which means that he cannot be applied with any anomaly, nor can he be stunned or dazed, right? So for this kind of enemies, you quite literally have to brute force your way in with raw damage. So for units like anomaly, it's gonna be very, very annoying to deal with. It just have to use the base attack and just smash your ultra, right? So in the future, if we get more enemies like the Mandrake, uh, then definitely we're gonna have to rely a little bit more on our crit DPS and we are not really exactly sure what kind of other enemy mechanics can happen in order to kind of counter not just a normal DPS but for any even crit DPS maybe they have like anti-crit or something like this so do stay tuned to see what the future holds so yeah with that we have come to the end of this uh, everything you need to know about shield defense is guide in Zelda Zone Zero hope you guys enjoyed this a uh, pretty short pretty sweet little guide that I kind of cooked up a little bit uh, especially for casual players who are still maybe facing difficulties in the current shield defense endgame mode, right? So, uh, that is gonna be that. World of the day is gonna be back. I don't know, right? Join Twitch, join YouTube, join Discord. All the best for Gajapoos. All the best for Jindo Poos. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.